Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through our intubation protocol. Um, so we should start with team. So we just introduce ourselves. So I'm Ben, one of the uh, intensive care consultants, uh, and I'm going to take the intubation role. Um, we've allocated our roles, so we're going to move on to drugs, um, which we've pre-drawn. And as your drugs in hemodynamics, Stephen, do you want to just make sure that you've got yeah. everything that you need? We're happy with our protocol where we're going to give rocuronium 1 to 1 1.5 milligrams per yeah. kilogram. All of our intubations are rapid sequence induction. Yeah. So we're going to move on to the room uh, and make sure that everything is prepared in the room so that we don't have to come out again. So I'm going to call Sadas, who's in the room, and just go through the checklist. Hi, Sadas, can you hear me? So can you just confirm for me that there's wall-mounted oxygen? and wall-mounted suction uh, with a Yanka catheter. Excellent. And a complete ventilator circuit with inline suction and an end tidal CO2. Can you make sure that's connected to the monitor and that is zeroed and up and running? And then uh, uh, an emergency waters Mapleson C circuit with its own end tidal CO2 and filter HME. And clinical waste bags, including two small bags uh, on the bed, please, with a tag. And we're going to need some drug infusions for after the intubation, so some propofol, some fentanyl, and some noradrenaline, please. And IV fluids attached to the patient and running if required. And finally, some clamps for the circuit. I'm going to do a quick challenge response um, checklist on the trolley. So, Stephen, can I do that with you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So can you challenge me and I'll show you that they're present. So uh, we need a C-Mac with a plastic cover and a D-blade okay. available and check that it switches on. So that switches on. And let's just make sure that we have a good view. Plastic cover's on. I have a D-blade here, so I'm just going to load that now so that we don't have to do that when we're inside the room. And that can go back in the holder. Okay. So, uh, selected size and uh, your tube. So, this is a gentleman, so we're going to go with a size 8. I'm going to go for 8, and I'm not going to pre cut it because I think we might end up proning. So, that's a specific yes. patient decision on this patient. And I'm going to check the cuff though. Fine. That looks fine. So nothing, no warning signs of a difficult airway. Okay. Do we consider him at high risk of cardiac arrest? He's on 60% oxygen and his sats are in the low 90s, so, so no. Okay. Um, Therefore, do we need the resource trolley located on available? So the resource trolley is just outside the room on the left, uh, and we will go through with the runner how to activate that. Okay. And difficult airway trolley? Is also just outside the room on the right, and again, we'll go through the runner how to activate that. Okay. So we'll move on to the set. We're just going to maximise any anticipated steps and, and make the communication as smooth as we can, uh, given that once we're in our PP, it's going to be much more difficult. So we're going to brief the roles, and so I'm going to take the airway um, uh, to intubate. Uh, you are also an experienced intubator, Stephen, so if it is a difficult airway, we'll run through our plan ABC, but an operator switch will be part of that plan. Okay. Um, so plan A is going to be straight to the CMAC mm -hmm. after 40 to 60 seconds after a rockeronium. I'll verbalise the view and then there'll be a very low threshold for going to the bougie. If it's an anterior view, it's a D-blade on the C-Mac. Um, otherwise, straight to an ET tube. Mm -hmm. If first view is unsuccessful, then we'll move to plan B, which will be the eye gel. Uh, and then we will oxygenate through the eye gel uh, on a semi-closed circuit. Uh, plan C will then be either to go to the MAC4 uh, or to an operator switch, depending on what we see in front of us. We're going to um, uh, give the anaesthetic on the patient's face mask. We're not going to connect our own face mask or circuit. But during the time between induction and intubation, if a patient desaturates catastrophically and becomes unstable, then we will put an eye gel in and go to a semi-closed water circuit to ventilate the patient until the intubation. So I think we'll go for a numerical system, if that's all right, Matt. So we'll get you with a surgical mask in the anteroom, never coming into the room looking through the window. And we'll keep it very simple following an airway first thing. So one will be, can you get the difficult airway trolley? Uh, two, circulation, cardiac arrest, can you get the cardiac arrest trolley? And we'll also pull the buzzer, so that will be audible as well. And three will be something anticipated, we need a lot more hands. Final thing before yeah. we put our PPE on, is can we remove everything that we don't need to take into the room? So mobile phones please, ID badges, anything in pockets, so that there's...
So guys, I'm just going to move to the intubation phase. So the principle is minima minimizing aerosolization and avoiding ventilation through the face mask and the water's Mapleson circuit if we can avoid it. Okay, so we need to ensure the ventilator is set up. So I've got an FI2 of 100% uh, volume control mode, safe tidal volume and rate. So we're ready to go, but I'm not going to switch that on. We need to optimize the patient's position for the best chance of a first uh, pass uh, intubation. So we need to get a pillow and just put it behind the shoulders, guys, so that we can just uh, maximize that view as much as possible for the first time. We're going to leave the patient sitting up for induction. As it becomes a tundered, we're going to come down into an intubating position. And then finally, our rescue device, this is going to be supraglottic, so an eye gel, first line. So if we need to rescue, we go for an eye gel and connect that straight to our water circuit, a separate setup circuit with our end tidal CO2. Is everyone happy with that plan? So we're going to complete the ICS checklist just to make sure that we've gone through everything and there's nothing that we've missed. We're pre-oxygenating to as much oxygen as we can get through the face mask. Um, and we're not going to put a face mask, our own face mask and positive pressure on the patient. We're not going to use nasal cannulae for apneic ventilation. There is a water circuit available and we're considering cricoid pressure, but we're not going to use cricoid pressure in this patient. The post-intubation sedation and infusions are ready. There is a Yanker suction ready that has been tested. There is adequate venous access. You're happy that it flushes? I've got two venous access. There's a working laryngoscope in Bougie. There is an endotracheal tube ready. There is an oral pharyngeal airway and an eye gel. The difficult airway trolley is unlikely to be needed, but we know where it is. The drugs and vasopressors are ready. There are no known drug allergies for this patient. Senior help is not required because senior help is present. The role allocation is clear and a difficult airway is not anticipated. Okay, so the rocheronium time is 11.06. We're going to give that 40 to 60 seconds. The patient is obtunded, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the surgical mask. And then if we can lower him slightly down into an intubating position and just place the bed up a little bit, please. And that's perfect. That's a holding. Hemodynamics is stable. There is no indication to, to put in a supraglottic airway at this point. And we're now past 40 seconds. Jaw feels relaxed. So, Stephen, if you're happy to keep an eye on the numbers for me. And I'm going to go in for my first view. So I've got a nice grade one view, but it's very anterior. So I'm actually going to go straight for a bougie, please, James. And if you have the clinical waste bag ready for when the bougie comes out. And that's through the cords. If you could load the ET tube, I'm going to hold the view. ET tube is loaded. I've got the tube. You've got the bougie. I have. And we're going to corkscrew that in, nice and gently. OK, so that's through the course. The there, please, James. I've got a good view. Out. And the cuff is up. There's no uh, obvious cuff leak, and there's no cuff herniation. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to come out uh, with that. Can you just take the ET tube for me? Okay. Stephen, can you open the clinical waste bag? I'm just going to put the contaminated deep blade in the clinical waste bag. If you hold the tube for me, I'm going to get the ventilator circuit, uh, which is just going to do a final check of connections. It's all connected. That's connected, and then I'm going to start the ventilator. Okay, on 100%, and let's just confirm end tidal CO2 and capnography, which we have. So with the CMAT, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to clean the exposed areas in the room um, with one in 1,000 chlorine solution. And then we're going to take the CMAT out with us when we've doffed, take the plastic off in the empty room, and then give the entire CMAT another clean from top to toe. So we need to now uh, tag that clinical waste bag, please. And we're going to um, put it in a second clinical waste bag. And that will stay with the patient for the first few minutes in case we need to uh, access the emergency D-blade again. But then we're going to dispose of it within the room. So we'll run a blood gas, make sure that everything is as it should be before we leave the room, and then we will start our doffing procedure.
Okay, guys, so we're going to do the first stage of doffing, which we do in the room that we've done the aerosol generating procedure. Um, and it's effectively the removal of the gloves and the gown, and then we will do the rest in the ante room. So if you follow my lead, as per the doffing instructions, and you grab the anatomical snuff box and just pull the first glove off, and then slide your fingers underneath the second glove, and all in one without touching the outside. Straight into the bin. And then because we're double gloving for this procedure, we repeat the same process. So anatomical snuff box, glove, pull the glove off in one hand and then slide your fingers underneath, never touching the outside of the glove and straight in. Let's have a few minds so that we don't have to touch it. That's great. Thank you. And now we're going to try and doff our aprons without touching the front of them, which is tricky but we will do the best that we can. So, hands behind necks and pull the first attachment, then hands behind back and pull the second attachment. And then if you reach behind and from the inside, so you're not touching the outside, then you start to roll from the inside, roll from the inside, roll into a ball and straight into the bin. So the guys, there's one more thing in here before we leave, we need to get rid of the visors. Okay, doffing the visors, hands behind heads. If you've got these ones, you pull the strap forward, lean over and just let it drop. So for the next stage of doffing, we do in the ante room. So we'll get Savas to open the door so we don't touch anything until we're back into the ante room. So now with the FFP3s, what I want you to do is take this, the nape of the neck strap and bring it up to the other strap. So you've got both straps together, and then you're going to lean over the bin, leaning forward, bring the strap over your head and let the mask just drop so you never touch the front of the mask. Just lean forward and let it drop. With gravity, the last thing we need to do is the hat. So fingers on the inside so we don't touch the outside. Lift it off and then into the bin without touching the outside of the hat. And then we are going to wash our hands with warm water and soap. 